Hey guys, Alexander Williamson here with The Secret History Living Inside of Your Aquarium. Today we are going to be talking about water. Specifically hot water versus cold water when you're doing a water change and the differences that you'll see. So today, I've done this test in the past just for myself, but I want to do it with you guys and see how it turns out. So you're going to see it how I see it and we'll interpret the results from there. But basically, I've got the API test kit and I'm, right now I'm just going to test for pH because there's no KH or GH being tested for hardness or things like that. There's ammonia, nitrates, and nitrite also in this test kit, but we don't really need to worry about that right now. So let me give you a quick overview, and that is that if you have hot water and you're trying to match, you know, say you've got your aquarium, and you're trying to get 80 degree water out of the tap, you're gonna turn the hot water on. Well, that water's partially coming out of your hot water tank. Your hot water tank gets water in it earlier in the day, and it continually tries to keep a supply of hot water in it. Now, that means that sediment and things that are already in your municipal water can build up in your water tank. Beyond that, it also, if you have an old water tank, it can you can have things in your water uh, from the actual lining of the tank or from your pipes that gets washed into there and then comes out in the faucet. So it's always a good idea to run the water a little while first, regardless of what you're doing. Now, on the cold water spectrum, if you have uh, pipes that are old, you know, some houses are 200 years old, 100 years old, 50 years old, mine happens to be 50 years old, and uh, I believe it's copper piping. Now, if you have lead piping, that's a whole different story. That's not good, and hopefully they've gotten rid of that. But for copper piping, um, Invertebrates don't like copper. So if you have corroded copper piping that actually has leached out into your water as it sits in the cold water pipes, that's not good either. Um, beyond that, your municipal water source or if you're on a well, that will all change. Here in Seattle, uh, we are basically the softest you can get. We have nothing in our water. It, they have to add, they add chlorine and um, fluoride and things like that sometimes, but uh, basically there's no dissolved minerals in it because our water is from snow, glaciers, and rain, and we really don't see much after it's gone through filtration and come down the treatment line. We see almost nothing in it. It's very neutral, like dead water in that sense, like invertebrates aren't going to like it. Some fish love love water that's like 6.0, no hardness. But I keep shrimp in all my tanks, and I need a little bit of hardness. And so you can do things like add crushed coral or um, get some uh, shells or something like that. But I just want to show you right now the difference between hot and cold water straight out of the tap. So let's go over to the sink real quick. I'm going to run the water for a sec. We're going to get it nice and toasty. Come on, sink. Sorry about that light change going on. We got sunset natural light outside. But want to get this up to temperature. And what we're going to do <clears throat> is we're going to fill some test tubes to do the liquid API test. And then we're also going to do the stir stick uh, test itself. So this water's getting warmer, getting warmer. Um, and we're going to let that heat up. Okay. So let's put it in the Washington cup. So we've got this going on. Let me pour one out and here we go. So this will be our selective sample. When you look at that water, let me adjust the lights. The lights, there we go. It's looking milky, okay? Let me switch over to cold water. So here, let me turn the label. So you saw that green Washington State that looks like milk, like like 1% milk, right? Or fat-free milk, for those of you freaks who drink that. No, I'm just kidding. Drink whatever you want. Um, now, our cold water comes out like such. Granted, the water is aerated differently and uh, is coming from different lines, so there are some subtle differences there, but this water, the hot water, comes out a lot milkier, so... I wanted to show you that. Pardon me while we carry these over one-handed while I'm continuing to film to our makeshift laboratory. So we've got the hot in the Washington and the cold in the owls. We'll grab the test tubes. 
We're going to be doing these liquid tests. I'm going to try to get them as close as I can to even in the test tubes because, uh, as you may know, these can be kind of unscientific in their results. There is some user error involved oftentimes in API tests. Um, that being said, another thing that I just wanted to mention while I'm doing this is that when you take a reading from your aquarium, the, the top and the bottom of the water may very well have different readings for your values of your, your stats on your water. So that's just something to keep in mind. Water that's getting mixed around and agitated is going to have different properties than the water that's been sitting still at the top of your tank. Um, okay, so we've got both these test tubes lined up pretty close. And we'll get our API test sheet here. So you, I'll put it right down here. So you can see that for pH, neutral is 6.0. And we're gonna add three drops of the reagent to each test tube. One, two, three. One, two, three. And do you notice a difference right off the bat? I sure do. Uh, so basically, that hot water has a higher pH straight out of the tap. Um, it's reading as 7.6 probably here. Now, let's shake it up and just, you know, even it all out because we want to be thorough. But we're seeing blue versus green right now. So... The blue, 7.6, it may even be darker than that, honestly. Interesting. So now let's take that cold water that you could bring to temperature other ways, like a heater in a bucket or something like that. Let me shake that up thoroughly. And we're getting these soft color blues. We're getting like a, a softish greenish blue. The light on the camera may not be the best, but now we're getting a pale blue and green compared to a royal blue on the other one. And so that's probably a 7.0, 7.2. So that's a, you know, a significant difference between, I hope it shows up well here. Uh, let's play with the con. Yeah, so here you can see that there's a definite color difference. The, the warm water here definitely has different properties than the cool water. So lastly, let's take an API test strip. And I've taken, we've got one for each glass. I'm gonna count to three. One, two, three, stir it three times. Set this to this side. And then one, two, three. And we're gonna look at the difference on the strips. Now the strips and the uh, the liquid reagent tests sometimes end up different. But if we're looking at hardness, and on this this uh, this deal here, hardness is going to be the first one, your your GH, which is your general hardness, and then your your uh, let me get that into focus, and then your KH, which is your uh, carbonate hardness is going to be the the next one and then your pH will be the next one after that. So, just as in the other test, let me get the shadow off there. There is a subtle but marked difference in this let me let me get the light right on this. But they look closer on the strip test. However, there is more orange to this one. This one is a softer SpongeBob yellow, whereas the other one is more orange. And so that's giving us a reading, according to this, for pH of probably around 7.0 or 6.5 for the one with the warm water and a 6 point to 6. 6.5 for the other one. Now, on the next set down of tests, they look pretty close, so that's good. Now, we're getting a little bit darker of a result, uh, if you can see it. It's hard to see on camera, but with the cold water, we're actually getting a little bit higher of general hardness. Right out of the tap, we're right around 30, and I'd say 20 for the, 
the the other one here on the uh, the warm one there. Uh, and for KH, we're hovering somewhere between zero and forty uh, in this light green range. Uh, let's see here, light green range here, and they look pretty similar so in this test it's not making a huge difference now I have had it though when I get back from a trip make a pretty big difference I've had general hardness in my uh, hot water heater actually be like 40 points higher than the other one um, you can see here when standing back the difference between the hot and cold water part of that is the properties of water and how pH works in that you the pH can be higher in hot water uh, by, by uh, default. But I just want you, and then it can go down when it cools sometimes. But it's something worth taking note of, something worth deciding. If your values, like if you live somewhere like Chicago where your water is like rock hard, it's like liquid r rock, uh, do this test at home. Take take one for one evaluation of of your uh, water, hot and cold, and see if there is a big difference between your hot water tank. And it's all going to vary by everybody's house. But I just wanted to bring up this issue. We'll talk more about the actual science behind what's going on later. This was mostly the test uh, to show you that. So. If you learned something, if you liked it, if you are nerdy and you could follow that this entire time and you've stuck with me, uh, consider hitting the like. If I've earned it, I've also got a Patreon going so that I can afford to do even more tests. You know, test strips aren't, aren't cheap, not that we're just doing test strip tests, but so that I can afford to uh, do all sorts of cool projects for you guys on film. Uh, beyond that... Uh, if you want to see more and learn more about the history and the science behind the things in your aquarium, your everyday aquarium, uh, please subscribe. Uh, feel free, free to drop me a message, comment. If you are a hydrologist or a geologist or a physicist and you have an opinion about something or you want to chime in on the results of this and uh, your two cents, I would love to hear from you. So thank you so much for joining me for that simple little demonstration to show you the difference between your hot water heater and your, your pipes. And I'm cleaning this up before my wife murders me because I've already got enough fish things everywhere. And I just hope that you guys are doing well and that your fish are doing well and that you keep note of things like that just to make sure they're as healthy and happy as can be. All right, guys. Well, from here in Seattle, the softest water in the world that's usually very neutral unless it's warm at my house, uh, I want to wish you a happy new year, and thanks for watching. I love you guys. Take care of yourself. Take care of your fish, and keep on swimming. Good night, guys.